Broadcasting from the Hyatt Regency in Seattle, Washington, Solutions Review is on location at the FME User Conference 2025, the peak of data and AI. Brought to you by Safe Software. It's Doug Atkinson, and we are back with Hillary Palmer and Jacob Blankenship of Dewberry. Thanks for being here. Thanks for Thanks. having us. So now you are here in the capacity of being customers, telling a customer success story. That's Who right. wants to go first? Hillary, can we can we get a, a kind of a little sneak peek? I know you haven't given this yet, but sure, sure. So our presentation is tomorrow, Thursday afternoon, and it's going to be an FME for good story. We're going to share a story about how we used FME to secure billions of dollars in federal funding for two states to help expand their access to broadband. Nice. That is a good story. Yeah. So tell me a little bit more about the technical nature of, uh, of this initiative. Yeah, I mean, we were working in two different states. One was Alaska, and we had to aggregate a bunch of different information all together to actually create statewide data sets that we could actually do comparisons on and actually use for this process. So it was definitely a big undertaking to get all the data into one standardized format so we could actually do this. And how do you, how do you employ FME for uh, for for doing good? Well, I mean, a lot of it is bringing a bunch of different types of data sets from all different counties, city governments to the state data sets, um, and be able to actually standardize this. So that's usually what FME is really good for: is using different formats you get from everyone, and then actually producing one single data set that can actually be analysis. So. Yeah, I gotta believe that's that's not as easy as it sounds. Uh, right. <laughs> right. I mean, how 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 does that go? I mean, you're dealing obviously with uh, with government entities, probably a lot of um, different data in different sorts of condition. Um, uh, what what kind of process uh, is involved around that? Right, so there was $42 billion on the line, and every state was in a competition against the others for their fair share of this funding. And uh, the states that already had statewide level GIS data published on open data sites definitely had an advantage, and so that's where we came in. We supported Alaska and Arizona. Um, and Alaska, for example, didn't have statewide parcel data. They didn't have statewide addresses, and both of those were critical in being able to mount a, a challenge to the, the federal data fabric that was going to be used to allocate the $42 billion. So it was, it was an arduous process of scraping and conflating and then comparing uh, the state's best available data to what, what the federal government had compiled in their best effort and then through the challenge process being able to say we think you could improve in this area in this area and here's my backup documentation and and through that process we are able to help our clients really uh, shine in the challenge process and secure some some big funding amounts to help uh, ensure their residents had access to internet at broadband speeds I, and I gotta believe there's um I mean, in order to get that, there's there's several steps you absolutely have to cross before you can even get to the next. Are they just literally winnowing you down as you go along each each applicant? Yeah. So um, the first step one was to build statewide address and parcel data sets so that you could compare your data fabric against what the federal government had compiled for your state. And you wanted to make sure that they weren't missing any communities or any broadband well, serviceable and, and locations. Were they? I mean, what kind, of, uh, what, kind of, what kind of comparison did that yield? So the, very, the federal government's very first version of the BSL fabric, or the broadband serviceable location fabric, was missing 69 communities in Alaska because the process that was developed was really developed looking at the East Coast and rural areas um, and even remote communities were really being left behind. So, and did the state understand that that was how the federal government was looking at it? I mean, did they recognize that there was potentially some missing data? 
Yeah, there was an uproar, and there were elected <laughs> officials that were involved. It was a very political an part uproar. of this this project. It's a good political word. Uh, and that's <laughs> how that's how the state became aware that they really needed contractor support. We we really needed to mount a response and participate in the challenge effort. Many states didn't participate in the challenge process because they looked at the the federal data and said, "Yep, looks looks good to us. It's not uh, there's no ROI for us to mount a, a response." But a lot of Western states and states with tribal areas recognized very early on that it was definitely in their best interest to participate in the challenge process, and it was going to be hard. It was going to be ugly, but we are are thrilled that we um, had the tools of FME at our disposal to help support our clients in this process. Yeah, so you end up with this challenge process uh, mm -hmm. in your lap. I mean, how do you use the technology to kind of sort through that? I mean, it was definitely sorting through uh, lots of different uh, data sources. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's mostly once we could get the statewide data set, we were actually able to compile it. That's when we actually started doing the comparisons with the government data and actually start doing kind of a tiered system of this is a full match, full match address. Well, but, uh, this is what I find fascinating is that you've got two sets of government data mm -hmm. right. that don't match. Yeah. And standardizing the addresses and all the information in those data sets before you can even do a comparison. Because if the street type is a boulevard, but then they have abbreviation of boulevard, well, they're not going to match. So you have to make sure all those are standardized before you can even do a full comparison. And do you think this is um, a state by state challenge? Is it very unique to each state as they as they compare these things against the what the do you do you see it that way that it's each state has kind of got its own right matching challenge right it's almost every county in every city does their so it's a, differently it's, it's really down to that granularity it's county by county town by town yeah yeah. So when the federal government was trying to build this data fabric, which was going to be used in determining how the funding got allocated, they obviously didn't have enough time to go call up the cities, call up the counties, call up all the tribes, and try to conflate that data at a national scale. So they, they grabbed the low-hanging fruit and then developed this very rigorous challenge process whereby states who know their counties, who know their tribes, states could say here's some better data or here's some data that fills your gaps unbelievable so did you start alphabetically and after you got to arizona you just said that's enough we're gonna <laughs> no so i live in alaska so i knew i knew that my home state of alaska was going to need some support especially having heard that 69 entire communities were missing from the data fabric um, after that, we realized, gosh, this is probably a situation that many other Western states, and especially states with, with large tribal areas, uh, they, they were going to need help too. And so we reached out to a couple other Western states with large tribal landowners, and Arizona was the first one to say, yes, we need help. And then with just those two clients, we were at max capacity. Yeah, we couldn't right. take on anybody Unbelievable. else. Well, and, and, and they are very obviously geographically quite different, but yet um, I would think from a data perspective, they're kind of similar in that they do have what you call unorganized territories and mm -hmm. tribal issues and so forth. So that must have been comforting to, to have you be the point person to come in for Arizona, given the, your experience in Alaska. Right. Addresses is kind of what we were comparing. And as you can imagine, addresses take a number of different forms. And sometimes a county will store an address inside a parcel layer. So it was, it was uh, FME really shown there when we were pulling data from different formats, from different geometries, different sources, standardizing it, and then comparing so that we could generate a challenge. And the challenge process was comparing the state's map against the federal map, and what needed to be submitted as a record of those challenges was a spreadsheet. So we were comparing two maps and using a spreadsheet, and FME was great at exporting the results of all of these comparisons into that so format. 
is this a one and done thing now? Now that you've done it, you're uh, are you good to go? That uh, now Alaska and Arizona are sorted, and uh, and they're now you have a now you have a, a paradigm and a and a system in place for maintaining. Uh, I mean that that data. Yeah, for Alaska, we we do have a basically a maintaining FME tool that will do statewide data set uh, for Alaska still. going forward. Yeah. yeah. Um, now things will change from different counties will still change their format every once in a while. So then you have to retool it a little bit, but that's how it goes. And, and are you, uh, so how do you, how do you stay abreast of that? Like, and, and are you in communication with them and trying to keep them in some sort of, we kind of let them do their, their thing. Uh, and it's then cause we, they're going to anyway. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. we just respond on the other end to, but when sure there's so right. much money on the line, I, I, I mean, can they kind of, it does that, turn the lights on and say, you know what, we really need to be better at this in order to create the opportunity to get the federal funding that we want for these important programs? So the allocation of that funding has already been announced, and so the funding in those amounts, as announced, is going to those states. Um, we discovered that during our process of supporting Alaska, in particular with the challenge process, that they didn't previously have statewide addresses as a data set. And we had built something really valuable. And so part of what we decided to do was to give that data set to the state of Alaska. We donated it, put it in the open domain free of charge, and in doing so, we really kind of said, here's something that was really important, and here's how it was used to bring over a billion dollars in funding it's worth maintaining moving forward. So what does it mean um, to get a fun funding like this? What is the value of, of having this kind of uh, initiative and, and broadband um, program? Broadband is absolutely critical for education, for telemedicine, uh, even something as simple as being able to save yourself money by watching a YouTube video to understand how to fix your dishwasher versus dropping $800 to buy a brand new one. It impacts people's everyday lives profoundly, and it also creates a lot of jobs. Um, both Alaska and Arizona having nearly a billion dollars each to administer for broadband projects. There's going to be um, there's going to be so many jobs for people laying fiber optic cable, helping. Uh, implement digital literacy training, how to stay safe online. Um, it, it's going to be very impactful for both of those states. I can only imagine. Is the, is the, is the project over or do you have other, uh, are, you, are you starting to work with other states or maybe approaching other states? What is the, what's next on the, what do you, what do you guys do all day long now, yeah. now yeah. that this is all done? <laughs> Yeah, the, the BEAD program is, is moving into administration phase. So the challenge process, which we'll be talking about during our presentation, that's over, it's done. It was traumatic, but it's over, it's <laughs> behind us. Uh, so now we're looking to pivot to move on. How can we support telcos and internet service providers as they now grapple with planning projects, permitting projects, constructing projects, as building projects? There's still a lot of work to be done. Okay. Well, outstanding. Well, I'm glad you're here. Thank this you. is great. We appreciate you swinging by. I love stories like this. Yeah. It's uh, it's 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 so practical, and and obvious, and yet, uh, for whatever reason, it doesn't get done unless somebody takes it on and 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 really drives it. And yeah. and it does have a a, a very specific and and. And significant benefit, uh, and I love it. Good yep. job. <laughs> thanks for being Thank here. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having us. If your business would like to be featured in a future event, contact us today.